So the Mojo team was established in 2005 uh, with Morgan and Josh. Uh, Morgan's on the left side there. Josh is on the right, just to give a little bit of a <laughs> name to the face. Uh, and together they have 30 years combined experience. So um, these guys have a lot of knowledge um, and, and you'll be able to pick up definitely some gold nuggets today from this. So uh, in 2020, they closed over $70 million in real estate. So uh, a ton, a ton of deals going on there. And they were have been awarded uh, by Realty One Group, their highest achievement for the last five consecutive years. Uh, both Morgan and Josh are licensed brokers and they are in the top 0.5 pro producers of the entire Valley. Um, and they are growing rapidly. Uh, we're super excited to hear directly from Morgan and Josh today on how we can get uh, more clients and close more deals. And they're going to be sharing the proven success strategies for converting leads uh, in this crazy uh, market that we're seeing here in Phoenix. I'm sure uh, a lot of you are, are feeling that. So uh, before we jump in, just a quick uh, few housekeeping uh, points to go over. Uh, please keep your mic uh, muted during the webinar. And also uh, all questions, uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, like a Q&A at the very end. Uh, so if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please write those down or just shoot them into the chat box and uh, we will make sure to get those addressed um, at the very end. So without further ado, Morgan and Josh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, no, we really appreciate it. We just want to thank, you know, both you, Justin and Joyce for putting this on. And, uh, you know, you guys are great partners. We really appreciate it. And Jacqueline over there is a total rock star. And, um, there's no one better when it comes to title and escrow, so we yeah. absolutely love her. No, thank you. I mean, uh, Rock Title has been an amazing partner. Like, like uh, Justin said, there's a they have a ton of great tools. Um, you know, are just really in there to help you grow your business. They understand agents, understand what agents need, and we've we've really been thrilled with uh, with their partnership. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, secondly, you know, obviously, like you guys did say. Um, we do run a team here out of Realty One Group, and we're always looking for uh, good team members. If you think that you might be a good fit, you know, please uh, reach out to Heather. She's our team manager. We'll give give you guys her number at the end, and uh, you can always reach out. But um, this isn't about that. You know, we want to always uh, give value, and we think that whether you're a new agent or a seasoned agent, that uh, we've got lots of really, really good information, stuff that you can incorporate into your business on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and which will lead to more deals, you know, throughout the year and throughout your lifetime. So, yeah, these are just some of the things that, you know, Josh and I found. I mean, obviously, when you're in real estate, there's a million different things and, and actions, activities you can do and, and even should do. And so these we just try to boil it down and, and get into some of those things that helped us be the most successful. And we believe any of you that put these actions into practice on a consistent basis into your real estate business, you will be successful. Some of you already are. Some of you are, are majorly successful. Some of you maybe are newer in the business and there's insight and activities for everyone. So um, that's, that's really where we came at this. We know it's a great time in real estate in Arizona in 2021. Uh, yeah, I mean, the market's uh, it's moving fast, no doubt. It's definitely moving fast. But at the same time, um, you know, it's a, it's a great time to be in real estate. I really don't think there's a better time to be in real estate. I mean, it's on everybody tips of the mind and everything else. And so, you know, you can be successful in this market. You can be successful in any market, but you can't choose the market. You can only choose the things you do in that market to ensure your success. Absolutely. And we've grown our business every single year from for, since 2005, for the last 16 years. And um, it's just incorporating these principles and practices that we do every single day to uh, lead to that success. So um, we got a lot of information today. I hope that we can keep it into one hour. And if you go a little over, we apologize. We know your time is very valuable. So we'll try and go as quickly as we possibly can. In fact, we've got so much information, we could probably turn this into three or four webinars, but we'll try and yeah. uh, get through it all. We'll keep, it, um, we'll keep it short. So I guess first and foremost, get more clients, close more, more deals. What exactly does that mean? Um, well, really, it's a numbers game. Um, naturally, if you get more clients, you're going to close more deals. And, um, you know, it sounds pretty obvious. No, no different than uh, burn more calories, lose more weight. Uh, 
you know. But, we thought uh, of all kinds of funny things, which is that, which is like, <laughs> hey, that's it. That's all you got to do. You got to get more clients, more deals, and more deals. And that's it. Just finish. End of webinar. <laughs> Um, but we're going to, we're going to kind of go into obviously, uh, how to get more clients and, and how that's going to lead to more deals. So, yeah. um, first and foremost, uh, mindset is extremely important. Um, you know, it, it, you have to have the right mindset going into it. Obviously, if you're, if you're looking to get more clients and close more deals, you know, maybe what you're doing right now isn't quite working. Uh, maybe you don't quite know where to start, or maybe, maybe, uh, you're doing all these activities and, and you're really active and really busy but uh, maybe you're doing the wrong things. And yeah. so, you know, having the right mindset and being ready to get out there and crush it and, and kill it every single day is extremely important. Um, we yeah, have, you, really, you really start out, I mean, like I said, you wake up each day and you start with that, with that mindset. You know, hey, today's gonna be a great day. It's a great time to be in real estate. There are people out there who I know, you know, friends of mine, new clients. I may meet someone today that could change my business or change my life. I'm going to reach out to someone today that could change my business or change my life. It's really starting that. If you wake up and you say, oh, it's a tough market. and Oh man, I, no one's want to work, you know, and, and you have that negative mindset. Well, that's going to translate and the universe is going to hear you and return exactly what you're, you know, thinking about and acting about. And so if you feel like it's tough, it's probably going to be tough. Um, if you feel like there's no listings, there probably isn't going to be any listings. I mean, you choose how you look at it. You choose your outlook as far as what you think today is going to bring for you. Yeah, don't, don't be negative, be positive. Um, you know, meditation helps. There's a lot of book, great books out there and podcasts that you could read and listen to that kind of help with that. But obviously, uh, staying very focused and very positive is uh, the most important mindset to have uh, when trying to generate more deals. Um, we, we have the, a number of questions here, and I think it's really important to be brutally honest with yourself. Um, for example, you know, how many hours per week are you working? How many, um, you know, how many hours per day are you putting into your business? Um, what producing, what productive, um, what, what producing activities are you doing during the day that's going to lead to more business? Um, what time are you waking up in the morning? Um, have you set goals? Have you set commitments? Do you have an accountability partner? Yeah. Which, which is something that's extremely important. I mean, accountability is, is huge in real estate. I mean, a lot of us go through life and maybe, you know, when you were young, you had your parents and they held you accountable with different things and tasks and your teachers, maybe you're in college and there were huge negative consequences for not doing those actions that you needed to get good grades, get through. Well, as you advance, unless you've been self-employed or you've, you've really had some practice doing this, some people kind of get into real estate and, and there's so much freedom. There is so much freedom. There is no accountability person other than yourself. It kind of, it leads them astray. They, they miss that, that person to keep them on task. Well, in this business, you really need to help keep, you need to be self-accountable. You need to be accountable to yourself and your goals and your dream. But then also it does help to have someone checking in with you and asking you, hey, how are things going? Did you follow up with that guy? Did you follow up with this, this new lead or this client? Have you done the things you said you were going to do, you set out to do to be successful? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to continue on, you know, what books are you reading right now? What podcasts are you listening to? You know, we strongly believe and, you know, that you're always learning, you're always kind of sharpening that tool. And so just to give you an example on our team, uh, we have, we read one book a month. So our goal this year was to read 12 books and we do one book a month and we all kind of sit, sit around and talk about that. It's, it's like a book club basically, but um, it's a way to kind of Keep each other accountable and, and also keep learning and, and uh, learning new things as we go on. Um, yep. and, and last but not least, but what is your why? Why do you want more clients? Why do you want to make more money? What drives you? What are you grateful for? These are all very, very important questions that you need to ask yourself to, you know, that's going to motivate you to want to get out there and, and be more productive and market more and prospect more. So, you know, mindset extremely is extremely important. Um, when it comes to, when it comes to getting more clients, there's two things you can do. You can either market to people out there and hope that they pick up the phone and call you, or you can prospect for leads. Yeah. You're either reaching out to people or you're sending stuff out and hoping that people reach out to you. There's kind of a proactive approach or a reactive approach. There's, you know, you can either take matters into your own hands. Or you can put a lot of stuff out there and hope that someone uh, reaches back out to you. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about what is marketing. Um, it's typically like an advertisement with a call to action. 
you're hoping that if you send out postcards and you send out a thousand postcards, you're hoping that one, two, three people pick up the phone and actually reach out to you or send you an email. Um, it's a very passive way of putting yourself in front of a large audience. Um, I would say that's probably the number one pro to marketing is that, you know, if you were to put yourself on a billboard, you're going to get yourself in front of thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. Um, the cons, it typically costs money, a lot of money. Um, and you have a very, very low response rate. Usually it's less than 1% of, uh, of the marketing material that you send out there gets a response from that. Um, and it takes a long time to market yourself. It could take well over a year of consistently sending out postcards and, and door knocking and uh, flyers and everything else um, before anyone even picks up the phone for the first time. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we look at marketing, all marketing is good, but as a newer agent or someone in the business, when you are just starting out, know that it's a, it's a long-term approach. It's the way real estate was done 20, 25, 30 years ago before the internet. Does it still work? Yeah, it can still work if you do it the right way. If, you, if you're farming an area, if you're super targeted, if you get involved in that community, you know, if, if you live in the community, if you're out at every potluck, you know, HOA dinner, you're you know, making sure that your face is seen and heard and known. Um, there are there are ways and, and people have been successful at farming. If you're just gonna shotgun out hundred postcards here and there, you know, it's it's uh, it's not gonna be the best. You you might get lucky, you might get a client, but it's not a it's not a long-term recipe for success. Yeah, I mean, I think a good example of someone who markets quite a bit is Russell Shaw. With Realty One Group, um, he obviously has been doing it for years and years and years. Um, it's our understanding that he spends over a million dollars on marketing, TV ads, and everything else per year. Um, but his consistency of, of doing it over and over and over again for for years and years and years has actually led to a very successful business. Um, yeah. Like you know, it's expensive, it takes a lot of time, um, but can be very successful. Yep. Um, what is prospecting? Prospecting is a very proactive way of having direct contact with a client or a potential client or a potential uh, referral source. Um, prospecting includes open houses, calling your SOI, calling leads, calling referral sources, door knocking, attending events. Um, Morgan and I, we strongly believe in prospecting. It's something that we do every day, two to three hours a day. Um, we know it works. Uh, we know that by prospecting, we can control our own destiny. Um, we're responsible for our own results. Um, it's a guarantee. We track our numbers and we know that from our efforts of prospecting that it will lead to more clients and more closed deals. Um, with marketing, there's no guarantee. You could send out 100,000 postcards and not get one phone call or one email from it. There are no guarantees when you're marketing, but when you're prospecting and you're doing the right activities and the right, right actions, you're always going to get results from it. Um, and the nice thing with prospecting, you can prospect seven days a week if you want to. You can wake up early in the morning, prospect all day until late in the evening with marketing. Same thing. You send out a postcard and then you sit there and you wait by the phone and hope that someone picks up the phone to call you. Um, also through prospecting, you're, it's 10 times easier to build a relationship on the phone with somebody or in person with somebody than through a postcard. So we know that we can... Um, reach out to someone and, and connect with them and have a very good conversation with them and build that relationship. Whereas we can't do that through a flyer, through a postcard or, or through any marketing efforts. It's a lot harder connection. You've got to, for them to look at it, you got to know that there's, you know, they're probably getting a couple of three, four of these a week. They're also seeing multiple, multiple ads from the mailbox of their areas. Uh, for you to stand out within just a single message is almost impossible in today's world. And so if you're marketing, you got to do a lot of it. You got to do it consistently. But prospecting is definitely the number one way to generate new leads. Yeah. If you want, if you want more clients, you double your prospecting efforts. If you want to double your business, double your prospecting efforts. Um, when it comes to prospecting, it's very important to have the right mindset. Um, number one, relationship over transactions. It's key to build that relationship with that person. Focus on the relationship. In fact, there's a lot of times where I'll have a conversation with someone and I won't even necessarily bring up real estate. I'll focus on how are they doing? How is their family, especially in these tough times with COVID and everything else going on? It's very important to build that relationship with that person on a very deep, intimate level. 
Um, naturally, would I love the conversation of real estate to come up with a market? Absolutely, and, and it typically does. Um, but I tend to focus on the relationship, knowing that if I'm authentic and if I have, you know, if, if I have a strong connection and rapport with that person, it naturally should lead to real estate deals. Not necessarily through that person, but maybe a referral. Um, number two, um, how can you provide value? If you're valuable, then they're always going to pick up the phone to call you. Um, even if they have, even if their AC goes out and they need a they need a con uh, contact for a contractor, um, they'll pick up the phone and call you. If um, if they want to know how the market's doing, they'll pick up the phone and call you. So you got to be valuable to that person, um, and that you're the expert. You want to approach each person from the how can I help you? How can I be of service? How can I be of value? You know, you're not. You, you can't look at everybody as you're my next deal in a sense, but but how what can I do to assist this person? I mean, we are all individuals and we gravitate to those who we know are genuine and sincere about helping us, you know, do the things we need to do. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, number three, it's all about the effort. Um, we can't control if someone will pick up the phone and call us, but we can control if we pick the phone up and call them. So, you know, once again, it's all about your efforts. It's about how much effort that you put into it is going to uh, lead to bigger and greater results. Um, in this day and age, attention span, it, knowing that people are all over the place and they see squirrels left and right, that um, our attention span is very, very limited. Um, I mean, you could, you could be looking at something on your phone and then three seconds later, distracted by something else and onto an entirely new topic. Um, people are bombarded with advertisements and marketing and people nowadays are getting text messages and phone calls from people, you know, from all different um, third parties talking about real estate or anything else. Um, so it's really important that your friends, your family, your SOI, that they know that you're in real estate. And it's very common for people to forget what you do. In fact, I could probably go through my entire SOI and, and maybe kind of get 20 to 30 people and know like, okay, this person does that, this person is that, you know, this person's a nurse, this person's a lawyer, this person's a doctor. Um, but once, but outside of 30 people, I think it kind of gets a little blurry. Um, so it's really important to stay in front of your SOI, in front of your friends and family, in front of your leads, because people are constantly distracted with other things going on. No, definitely. Um, things that you can do to prospect. Um, so we put together a list. Actually, the list was quite a bit longer. There's about 17 things on the list, and we cut it down to, to about six. Um, if you want to know what those other things are, you can reach out after, after the Zoom call, and we're, we'll be happy to get you that list. But um, number one thing, call your SOI. If there's only one thing you can do to prospect, it would be absolutely, it would be to call your SOI. Call the people that know you, like you, trust you, love you, um, people that are going to refer business off to you. Um, you know, your SOI should be at least 100, 100 names, phone numbers, emails long. Um, and at the very least, be reaching out to them on a daily basis. Um, I think it's important to, once again, not only let people know that you're in real estate, but let them know what your goals are. For example, if you have a goal of, of selling 20 homes this year, just say, hey, you know what? Uh, just want to let you know that my goal this year is to, to help 20 families buy or sell real estate this year. And would you be willing to help me out with that goal? Most people are going to say, yes, absolutely. I'd love, it to, I'd love to help you out with that. Okay, great. Well, if you ever come across anyone that's even thinking about buying or selling, would you, you know, please you know, pass on my contact information? Or better yet, maybe share their contact information with me, and I'll, I'm happy to reach out to them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, knowing those people within your sphere are going to be some of your greatest allies you know, now when you're starting out and going into the future. So within that circle and those people who already know you, already like you and trust you. I mean, that's where some of your best business can be generated from and led from, but it, it's consistency with staying in front of them, consistency with reaching out and also being of service and being of value to them. Yeah, you should be reaching out to your SLI at least once a quarter. And the easiest way that we do it, there's 26 letters in the alphabet. And if you were to pick two of those letters every single week for 13 weeks, you would get through every single person in your SOI. So, and you get every single quarter. So that's probably the, the easiest trick that you could do to, mm -hmm. to call your SOI and be on top of that. Um, we've got a couple other little things on here, like 
doing a Zoom coffee. And we know right now a lot of people are COVID sensitive. So if you can't, obviously it's best to be able to meet someone for coffee, especially someone in your SOI. But if they're unable to meet or don't feel comfortable meeting, you can always say, hey, you know what? Let's uh, set up a 10 minute meeting. We can catch up and, and uh, you know, just talk over coffee. Um, it's kind of a fun way to do it. Um, another thing that, that we do is um, we like to do an annual real estate evaluation of their home. And if they don't own, own a home, we can do an annual real estate market update for them. And in fact, this market's so hot right now, it's appreciating so quickly that you could probably do this every single quarter and just give them a market update on their house or, or what's going on in the market, interest rates, you name it. And it would be very relevant current uh, information that I think everyone really appreciates. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to reach out, especially real estate related. And so when you can, like Josh said, reach out and provide a updated home value and something you do and say, hey, I, you know, Bob, I, I took a look at, at your home and some of the recent sales in the neighborhood. Here's what it looks like. You're, you're sitting well, well in your house. You know, call me if you have any questions about the market. You know, reaching out and being able to provide those little things of value really make a difference. Absolutely. And, and we actually, we do it on a monthly basis. So they'll, all of our clients get a monthly email from us with uh, kind of an updated valuation of their home, but also they get all the active penny and solds from the MLS within their subdivision every single month. And because people like to look at photos of their neighbor's houses, they, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, pe people are very nosy. So um, it's something that every single person that owns a home in your SOI or in your lead source, um, everyone in your database, they should be receiving these on a monthly basis, but at the very least, once a year, call them up, give them a evaluation. It's a very easy phone call, just no different than if you're having an annual physical or, or check up with the doctor. Um, hey, just want to let you know what your house is worth or what's going on in the market. People love to hear that. Um, number two, call leads. Um, you know, after you've uh, called everyone in your sphere, um, calling leads is, is very important. We use a system called uh, Commission Inc. We believe that they're one of the best, if not like the Rolls Royce of CRM systems. Um, and lead, generate, lead generation systems, but there's also uh, Boomtown, Real Geeks, you can get Zillow leads, you can get homes.com leads, you can get realtor.com leads. There's lots of different ways to get leads. Um, it does cost money, obviously, to use any of these sources, but um, we find that if you're working with the right systems and you're getting the right leads that can be exclusive to you, for example, through Commission Inc., we get leads directly to us and to our team, and we find that there are a uh, higher quality lead, and there's not 50 other agents out there that are all trying to compete for their business and calling them and hounding them, um, you know, like you would with uh, like Zillow leads or some of the other lead sources out there. But um, spending time each and every day or every week uh, reaching out to leads um, is a great way to add new people into your funnel and, you know, every single week. Yeah, when you're, when you're prospecting, I mean, everybody needs a source of new income and new business and new things to do. And so whether you're paying for a lead source or generating leads, you've got to have some action there to get new people into your sphere, into your world that will eventually work with you. Yep, absolutely. I mean, we, we joke all the time about how we actually have a lead problem that we have too many leads and not enough agents to work them. But, you know, it's a, it's a good problem to have. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's very important to always have uh, a system in place where it's generating leads in one way, shape, or form, just so you're getting that new blood in there. Um, number three, open houses. Um, this is another great way to generate a lot of leads. In fact, in this market, as you guys all know, there are few and far between, which even makes open houses even more important. If you can send an open house these days, I mean, that's golden. Um, usually you'll get a flood of people through there. A lot of people, especially right now, we're in February and, and March is coming up where they're unrepresented, they're second home buyers, they don't have any relationships with other agents out there. So if you're able to secure an open house, no matter where it's at, you're likely to generate you know, leads from that. So um, number four on the list, um, be active, always be involved, you know, uh, attend events, volunteer, be active in the community. Great way to generate conversations about real estate and, and generate more leads. Um, number five, door knocking. We feel that uh, this is also a great way to get yourself in front of a lot of people that may be looking to sell, or maybe they know someone who's looking to buy or sell. Um, yeah, now's a good time to, to get out there and there's different ways, you know, especially when you're looking at open houses. I mean, there's not 
you know, open houses in this market are quick and they're, they're going fast, you know, new homes. But, you know, in all reality, some of the best open houses today are those houses that are not the best house, not the best listing on the market. You know, if you find that open house that doesn't sell opening weekend, I think you're going to have a lot more success at that because you can have a better conversation knowing that most people walking through the door are going to be knowing most unrepresented people coming through the door, you know, maybe aren't going to be looking at that house exactly. It opens up a conversation you can have about the market, about other homes on the market. If you're if you're sitting in the open house at the hot new listing that's going to get 12 offers, you know, on the first day and maybe another five the next, you know, that's not going to be the best open house. First off, it's going to be overrun with agents and their clients. Second off, you know, the, the people that do come through, they're going to be only focused on that house and, and purchasing that house. And so if you're out looking at open houses and doing that, you want to try to find ones that maybe aren't going to sell as fast. And then you can door knock around that neighborhood, have some conversations about some of the other homes, you know, in the neighborhood, because maybe, maybe that house has some flaws, a little few things that may make it sell a little bit slower, but maybe the house down the street is that hot new listing and it could be yours. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're able to get a listing, like Morgan said, you can door knock before it comes to the market. You can door knock when it comes to the market. You can door knock when it goes pending. You can door knock when you sold it and you can go through and, you, and once again, sellers are very eager and anxious to know what's going on in the neighborhood. They want to know like, you know, where their home prices are and whatnot. And there's a lot of people right now that are thinking about selling. I mean, you know, I, my, my family, we're, we're in our house, but if someone came and, and offered me the right price, I'd probably sell it. Um, I don't know. There's yeah. a lot of people out there that are, that are genuinely considering selling right now. And so door knocking is a great way to, to get your face in, in front of other people. Yeah, and the, the key is, is to provide, to provide value and to be there and take it from a value approach and, you know, and be courteous, of course, when you're there, knowing that people may or may not want, want certain contact, you know, hey, that's okay. I'm just here to provide some value, give you an update on what's happening in your neighborhood. We listed and sold this, you know, down the street and here are some of the comps and, you know, just, just wanted to provide that for you and see what, how this may affect you in your life. Yeah, sold for cash, multiple offers, $50,000 above list price, so, you know, people in the neighborhood like to hear that sort of thing. And you look like you're the most incredible person if you're able to do that. And, uh, you know, it's a great way to generate more business. Um, and last but not least, uh, this is one thing that we kept on here is uh, buyer and seller seminars. And lot, lot, obviously we can't necessarily gather and get large groups of people together. So doing a Zoom buyer and seller seminar, um, if you've got information that you can share, especially, you know, with sellers, you know, talking about how hot the market is or, Right now, buyers, you know, how to win that multiple offer war. Um, and you're able to put together a seminar using uh, Facebook ads and Instagram ads and, and really kind of get the word out there. And if you can get yourself in front of 20, 30, 40, 50 people and, and talk about, you know, this and that and how you're the expert, um, that should definitely generate some more business for you. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things you can do. And when we kind of you know, we take a look at this. I think I think Josh and I are uh, back out here, but um, I think in in all aspects of of the real estate business, we really look at everything from from the approach of you know it, it really is a, a sales funnel. You know, every business has a has a sales funnel, and you're working. So it's an upside down triangle here. You know, you, you've got to you've got to basically approach your business, approach your lead generating activities from with keeping this in mind, this is something that's been very helpful for us. And so, you know, you break this down into a few different sections. Um, you've got your activities, um, which is really gonna be anything and everything you are doing, things we just talked about that are gonna help generate leads, generate clients and interactions within your business. So, I mean, there's, there's anything and everything you're doing. I mean, as a real estate agent, as someone who's in the business, Honestly, you need to wake up in the morning and with the idea that any, any interaction I have, any client I, I talk to, any new person I meet is a potential you know, client for me down the road. It could be um, someone at the, from the grocery store. It could yep. be someone you're out pumping your gas yep. and, and you strike up a conversation with someone. You, and you should be intentional about striking up those conversations. Yeah, I mean, definitely. You, you want to get out 
you know, you've got to get a, a very, you know, a great person said, hey, the quickest way to success is getting people to know you, like you, and trust you in the quickest way possible. And so, you know, you need to build awareness around yourself as a real estate agent, yourself as someone who can help them get success and get some clarity on, on their decisions to move, to sell, what's going on with the market. You know, you are the expert and finding and, and building those activities that, that lead to these real estate conversations are things that, uh, that you can do. I mean, there's so many activities. Like I said, it's literally everything and anything you can be doing. You don't want to be a secret agent. You yeah. know, you, <laughs> secret agents don't, don't close any deals. You want to, you want to be known, you know, to, uh, to everyone out there. So, um, I mean, even something as simple as, as having your name tag on, which we don't necessarily do. We, we have t-shirts, we've got masks made with, with our, with our, uh, our brokerage and our, our team on there. Um, but uh, any of these things can lead to conversation. So just anything that you're doing out there, you should wake up living, eating, breathing, real estate on a daily basis. Okay. So let's keep going through this uh, this one a little bit because you know it really is, like I said, um, I like to actually think of, you know, think of the people in my sphere and also, you know, those in my database and everything else. And kind of understand where they are within this, because um, as you're doing more activities and you're putting new prospects and that into the top of your funnel, you know some people are going to stay in this top layer for for quite some time. It just kind of depends. And other people are going to move through, you know, a lot quicker. So your number one goal with all of your activities, anything you're out doing, that's that's to generate leads. I mean, what is a lead? A lead is literally anyone who may buy or sell real estate from you now or sometime in the future. I mean, there are literally seven and a half billion potential leads out there. Wrap your head around that. <laughs> Obviously not all of them are gonna buy in Arizona. I mean, it kind of seems like that's what's happening right now. But you never know, you never know. I mean, someone could come out. Yeah, it does seem like it's gonna happen yeah. that way too. I mean, so, but you know, everyone out there, I mean, in, in general, I mean, you, you've got whether they're from another state or for anything, you know, we know that not everyone's going to move to Arizona and every, not everyone's even American or, or going to buy here in the States. But at the same time, I mean, anyone who's out there can become a potential lead. If you're doing activities. Your goal is to get, get people's contact information and have them in your funnel. Yeah. And the idea behind that, is, you know, by saying seven and a half billion people, is just to get you guys to think bigger. You yeah. know, not don't just think about, oh, you know, just my friends and family, but think like anyone you come in contact with. It could be your mailman. It could be, yeah. you know, it could be your dry cleaner. Who knows? Anyone could potentially buy or sell real estate through you. And, and talk to any successful agent and ask them as far as their current clients and how many of them are from Arizona, you know, how many of them are from out of the country. What you're going to find, we really are a melting pot here in Arizona for the United States and in a, to a lesser degree for the world as a whole. But really from all over the United States, you know, Arizona is really being discovered and people are moving here all the time. And, you know, those people in other states are talking about it. So, it, you know, it's coming up and, and this becomes a topic of conversation for there. But going back to leads, your number one goal for anyone who is within your database and, and as a lead source, your number one goal is to get an appointment with them, is to make an appointment, which leads you down to the A for appointments. Now this this can be you know an in office consultation an in office buyer consultation you can an appointment to show properties to them it can be an appointment to walk their house on a seller walkthrough it can be a listing appointment even better um, you know also if when you're looking at so your number one goal is to get face to face and to have that face to face connection people connect better even through video when when it's face to face you know. Sales have been made for well, 100 years or so over the phone, and it's a great way to connect, but it's not quite the same as being face-to-face -face or being able to see and interact with that person across. And that's why if you can't get in person with someone, we think the next best thing is, is getting face-to-face, -face. and that's, that's inviting them to do a FaceTime call, or if they're a buyer and they're out of state, you know, inviting yourself to go and tour the property for them and FaceTime them when you're there at the showing. I mean, it's a very easy way to say, hey, let's get face-to-face -face and I'll, I'll walk you through this house. 
But what you're also going to do there is you're going to talk to them and spend some time talking about the house face to face afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and buyers really appreciate that. I mean, once again, not only are you making yourself look like the expert, but you're you're offering a level of service that that probably goes above and beyond what their expectations are. So if you're willing to go and meet at a property and FaceTime them or do a Zoom call with them there at the property and walk them through every square inch and talk about all the pros and the cons, um, they're going to really, really appreciate that. And that's going to quickly turn a lead into a client. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, they're going to see that and, and see that value. And, and you know, they can't do it. They would love to go and walk it themselves. But the next best thing is, hey, I'm going to run out. It's a hot moving market. Let me take let me take you there on our own. Let's use technology to our advantage. So once again, when you have if you set that appointment, your number one goal in that appointment or those activities you're doing is to is to turn that appointment into a client, a committed client who is committed to working with you. They've signed a listing agreement. You're now listing their house. They've signed a buyer broker. You know you have true intention that you are going to be their agent and uh, and working through it. So. Um, so that goes into the uh, the next category. You see, we're getting smaller down here in the funnel. Obviously, as we go to clients, clients, you you put um, your goal whenever you have a client. And this one, sorry, is um, now that you have a client, you've got to get that person under contract. Obviously, so if you're out showing them properties, you know your goal is to find them the house that they want. It's not necessarily to force them into the first house that uh, that they walk through and kind of like. It, but it is to work with them through the process and, and get a contract on that, that home. And then, and know too that whether, whether that first deal falls out, I just want to say that the most important thing as we touched on earlier is it's all about the relationship. You know, deals come and go, clients are forever, if you do it right. Um, you know, because whether it's the right house or not, it doesn't matter. You get back to work, you get back to the drawing board. If you have a listing and the buyer, you get on a contract and they fall out, you get back to work. You find another buyer. So what? Don't ever sacrifice a client in the future for one deal. It's never worth it. You never want to burn that bridge or that relationship. You want to keep pressuring, you know, keep moving on, keep moving them through. And obviously at the end it is closings, they lead to uh, the checks and so. You know, and, and we all get paid. That's how everybody's in working for to assume, you know, to earn money, to support their family, to live a better, more prosperous life. Um, you know, at the bottom of the funnel, you've got those clients who the deals that close lead to the commission check, but it doesn't end there because you've got any of these past clients, you want to take them right back up and put them back in the top of the funnel um, and start and start continuing those, like we said earlier. Some of your best, your best future leads, your best future source of business is your past clients and your friends and family, that sphere of influence. But the only way they're going to do that is if you are keeping in touch with them, following up with them on a consistent basis, and, and really working them back in. And I think it's important to point out that a lot of agents, and Morgan and I, we did this, you know, when we were newer in real estate or whatever like that, it's a... Uh, a lot of agents will get stuck in the client category or get stuck under contract. They might have, you know, five clients they're working with or 10 clients, and then maybe they get a couple of them under contract and they're really focused right here. And they're not focused on prospecting or marketing or doing any activity that's going to lead to more business. They're focused right here. And then what happens is they close these deals, they close these clients, and then they're like, where's my paycheck for the next couple of months or, yeah. or three to six months? So that's what leads to the roller coaster in real estate that everybody as a newer agent wants to avoid because this does, you know, as you're getting and you're out there and you're showing properties and you got a couple of clients and it's go, 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 let's get them under contract. We understand that, but you can't ever forget to continuously do the activities that feed the top of the funnel. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, I had an amazing December. Hey, that's great. And then you're like, yeah, and I didn't close anything in January or February. And then the next and... time I closed the deal was May. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, why not? It's because you probably worked so hard and you forgot or didn't spend any time, you know, doing those activities, generating more leads, putting people in, working them back through the system. And then you spent your entire February, March, and April refilling the pipeline with new people coming in yeah and so that's why we always 
strongly recommend time blocking two to three hours a day, you know, Monday through Friday, or you can do it on the weekends too, but at least 10 hours a week prospecting minimum, you know, trying to generate because otherwise you're going to get down here, you're going to close deals and then you'll have nothing else to show for it months after that. So. Yeah. And a couple, a couple takeaways that, that we think um, really, really matter. Number one is consistency. You know, you, you need consistent daily activities. And if you do those consistent daily activities, it will lead and generate success. You know, we can, we can attest to that, vouch for it. It's proven true in our business and we've seen it proven in countless others. It's really, you know, your, your consistent activities that you're doing in this and where you're generating the leads, that's going to lead to people working through. You, you need to be consistent. You need to get up every day and do something within your real estate business on a consistent basis to continuously feed that fund. Yeah, and there's a great book out there called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. And if you have not read it, um, don't take it from us. Go read his book. Uh, it talks all about how consistency will lead to greater results. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a great book. Uh, we read it as a team in the month of January. Uh, it's so, you know, it's so true. We, we'd read it before, but it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, honestly, it's a great book. If you're starting out newer in the business or want to become successful in any venture, it really is like some really great, um, you know, base ground level um, stuff. The other thing I wanted to mention that's been really helpful, we know that within the sales funnel, within the process, you're going to have people who move through faster than others. You know, others may spin around at the top, like, like that penny you drop in the, uh, the funnel at the mall. I'm going back to the mall. Who's been to the mall lately? <laughs> Probably uh, nobody forever. But um, they still open. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think some are actually closing down, but uh, I wouldn't know. So anyway, that thing. Uh, some people are up there, but some people move through really quickly. So let's talk about those people who move through quicker. Uh, we feel that one of the most valuable things you can do today is, is put together a hot list. Put together, you know, the most likely people you feel are going to buy or sell with you in the next three months, next six months, next year, and be intentional about that list. If nothing else, if nothing else, you make the calls, you make the follow up to your people that are the strongest there and, and you mix in some friends and family, some SOI and asking them for the referrals to add to that. And if you don't have a hot list, create well, then, one. Then create, then, well, you better start doing the activities to start generating that hot list. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, it's, it's just something we, we feel is paramount and been incredibly beneficial, you know, to see those people's names on a piece of paper. Absolutely. Um, another thing, another uh, hot tip that we have for you is uh, start saying yes more. Um, it's really easy to say, oh, no, I'm busy, or no, I don't feel like it, or this or that, you know, making excuses. Um, uh, a good one is, you know, for example, if your kids play soccer, maybe be the assistant coach. Yeah, volunteer. You don't have to head coach. Yeah. You know, show up, get involved. You know, if you are there in the sidelines, strike up some conversations with some of the parents, ask them how their day's going. I mean, you're, you you Find people you share some common interest with or your kids are doing the same kind of thing. Or if you don't have kids, like I said, you can, you know, there's different hobbies and different groups. Um, it, you know, we're really starting to come back with this. Schools are back open again. I think we're going to be moving past, um, you know, the shut-in environment of, of last year. And that's an opportunity to get out there, be friendly again, make some interaction. Yeah. And then in number two, you can start small. Uh, I don't know if this is two or three, but... <laughs> Number Somewhere on that list, uh, you know, you, you don't have to go out there and, you know, let's say if you're not used to prospecting, if you're not used to making calls, you don't have to start day one, I'm going to make two hours of phone calls, start with calling five people. Yeah. And just, it doesn't even have to be real estate related con uh, conversations. It can just be, hi, how are you? How are you doing? How's your family? Focus on the relationship um, and just kind of building that confidence and working that moment and building up that momentum. So maybe you start with five. And then the following week, you know, you, now you're doing 10 calls a day. Then you're doing 15 calls a day. You the, can build up. Yeah. And the key is, once again, the, the key is consistency. So you want to have a number that's attainable and that you can do it on a frequent and consistent basis, um, you know, so you don't burn out. If, if you're starting out and you're like, oh, I'm going to prospect eight hours a day and you do it day one and never do it again. Well, I mean, that's a, it's a recipe for disaster. That's why. Even if it's a small amount, 
find those small but consistent activities you can do to generate new leads. Yeah, and focus on your efforts. Last but not least, focus on your efforts. Don't fo focus on the end result. The end result will come, but focus on your efforts. And you know, a lot of us will make goals and we're like, oh, we want to sell 20 million this year. Okay, great. But if you break it down, you focus on, well, how are you going to get there? It's going to be making the, the daily consistent prospecting as, uh, efforts to be able to yeah. hit that goal. And I don't even personally like using the word goal. I like using the word commitment, um, you know, setting a commitment. I'm committed to making 10 phone calls a day. I'm committed to making two hours of, of calls a day or, or whatever, marketing and efforts. Yeah. And the reality is, though, is. The only way you control your results is to control the efforts. I mean, you've got to control the day-to-day, -day, the grind. Uh, you know, it really is true. I mean, if you want great results, you've got to first put forth great efforts in order to get there. Um, and, and maybe there, there are people who get there without great efforts or it might appear there, but that's not going to be a consistent recipe for success. It's not going to keep them consistently successful over the long haul. But those efforts and focusing on that is going to be another huge key. Yeah, we have we have a great goal setting worksheet that we're happy to provide. We're uh, we're an open book, guys. So if there's anything you need, you know, use us as a resource. Um, we're always yeah. happy to share. But we've got a great goal setting um, worksheet that you can use if you want to use it to set your goals for the next quarter, the next year. Um, we've got great scripts that we're happy to provide as well. You know, open house scripts and buyer scripts and seller scripts, you name it. Um, we should actually write up Heather. Heather is yeah. our team manager. Um, she oversees uh, all of our team members on the team. Hello. And, and there yeah, she oh, is. She's right there. So Hi, Heather. Heather helps, uh, you know, she, she helps keep everybody uh, on track and, and hitting their goals and different things. I mean, we run our team differently than, than your traditional team. You know, it's, it's more of a, uh, a volunteer. We're not, um, you know, we don't, hold you or force you to do any specific activities or anything. We definitely encourage, uh, provide support and everything else, but nobody is uh, forced to, you know, put on a headset and bang the phones for, for hours. Um, I think it's a good thing to do, but uh, you're not forced to do it. Well, let's write our number up here on oh. the board. Um, the other, go ahead. I was gonna say, reach out to Heather if you have any questions, if you need anything, she's amazing. Um, yeah, I know, um, I know it's like they're kind of hard to write. <laughs> Hopefully I can write this number dark enough so you guys can read it. It's a uh, 602-359-7771. Um, okay, so, you know, honestly, just in, in closing, and then we'll get to some questions and everything, guys. I mean, obviously, these things are not like novel ideas. Um, it, but, we wanted to touch on that too is um there really is no magic pill you know there's no secret script there's no secret lead source that all of a sudden uh, pumps out you know oodles and oodles of business um you know there it's it's really for, for the individual agent and the individual it's really about getting clarity on some of the things within your business getting clarity on on your your sales funnel getting clarity on your process and understanding where different people are within that process. And then what's the next step? What's that next goal to get, you know, these people that are in my world, in my sphere, you know, to move forward. And, and, and so these are the things that, that have helped us over the years and getting clarity and saying, here's how I'm moving people along. Um, and, you know, they may sound a little uh, correct, but it's not. I mean, and you're doing that by providing value and service to them at every step along the way. 